Labas, Manovardas Miłosz Parczewski. Uh, hopefully this is okay from the first lesson. Uh, this presentation was originally assigned to Dean Munori from ECDC and he shared some slides he couldn't come for today, uh, but the data is here for you, so I will present the mostly ECDC data, a little bit peppered with our own thoughts and uh, epidemiological uh, issues. So, uh, as you know, uh, medicine is art or not, sometimes we think so, depending whether we are very tired or not, uh, but we try our best to cure the diseases as uh, rapidly as possible, and we are facing Hep C elimination, so art is the elimination of necessary by Pablo Picasso, uh, the great artist. Uh, we know, okay, good. Sorry, but uh, this is a little bit cut from the top uh, on, on this one, so I was wondering if it's okay. But uh, don't worry. No, okay, sorry. Uh, so we know that UNAIDS has uh, sustainable development goals, uh, goals as good health and well being, and there has been set up goals for WHO elimination of WHO. There, there has been uh, goals set up for hepatitis B and C by WHO and just a brief review of these goals for you. Uh, decreasing incidence and mortality uh, 90 and 60 percent by 2030 which is approaching very fast and there are more specific goals and even these goals on testing and treatment are uh, more, more specific which will be on the next slide but the aim is for everybody uh, in the world to receive three doses of Hep B vaccine, which will significantly impact the Hep B epidemic, uh, prevent mother-to-child transmission by both active and passive prophylaxis, uh, full blood safety, uh, harm reduction programs, which have been discussed before on these meetings, uh, with a target of 300 uh, injection set um, exchange per participants, and 90% of people diagnosed with Hep B and Hep C, and most of them uh, treated. Actually, for Hep B and for, for Hep C, these elimination targets are set to 90-90. They have been uh, slightly different at baseline, by, but they end up being the same. So we will see in the future if it's uh, possible. Uh, there will be presentation on HIV, so we will not be stopping here. Um, many people with undiagnosed uh, infection in the, U in the European area, 4.7 million and 40-80% uh, uh, of them with Hep B, and 3.9 million, uh, so 20 and to 91%, depending on the statistics uh, in the country. So there is a huge country difference. With Hep C epidemiology, you have uh, surveillance uh, objectives set up by ECDC. Uh, basically, these are linked to chronic and acute infections uh, and monitoring of a proportion of chronic cases, new diagnosis, and uh, reinfections. So I think these goals will be shifting in the future to reinfections from the perspective of Hep C, which will be more and more interesting and important as we see Q rates, national Q rates being expanded. So shortly about uh, Hep C again, generally prevalence a little bit uh, less than 1% uh, in general population, but notably higher in people who inject drugs and prisoners. Uh, basically still very large uh, unknown in the general population, uh, high and increasing incidence in MSM populations, and I will mention this later in the context of acute Hep C, uh, which will be important, and it will be also presented as the last talk of the meeting uh, by Professor Rockstroch. Uh, and migration, it depends, but uh, it depends on the country, it depends on the type of migration, but estimated 13% of burden among migrants. Uh, so this is the number of cases reported in uh, EU. Look, the, the number of acute cases is very low, and the under-reporting in this context is huge. Basically, we do not catch enough of acute uh, um, hepsis, I think this will change in the setting of PrEP, 
uh, also, but uh, so far the um, operation to diagnose acute hepatitis C is suboptimal. Uh, also, the rate of reported hep C cases over the last years, despite many efforts and rollout of diagnostics within the country, is more or less stable, so there is no uh, huge increase in the, uh, uh, in the report. And the rate, uh, basically, good data are there for Central Europe and for Western Europe and not the best data from the perspective of ECDC uh, for, the, uh, for the Eastern Europe, but it varies between 5 to 15 uh, cases per 100,000, uh, with uh, some of the Southern European country, countries having it a little bit less. Uh, okay. Uh, so it's also important that majority of cases are within the age limit of 25 and 44 uh, and majority of VC are male injection drug use uh, and MSM is a problem and will remain a problem uh, in the nearest future. So this is the same, it's just the slide for the distribution. Also, somehow it's skipping some of them, sorry. Uh, Please note also the difference between chronic and acute uh, infections per diagnosis. So injection drug use is quite commonly actually diagnosed both in chronic and in acute stages because these people are very often have, uh, HIV co-infected, so you uh, really follow them up from the perspective of uh, Hep C uh, very closely. Similarly, we catch most of acute Hep C's in MSM Generally, uh, blood and blood re research products will be uh, diagnosed in the chronic uh, stages. Also, HIV, we remember that it is actually associated with uh, hepatitis C co-infection, especially in MSM population, uh, prison inmates, which I have already mentioned. And please note that we remember that Hep C in HIV person shortens the lifespan. It shows, shortens the lifespan of 17 years. This was calculated by our center in Poland. The disparity between an HIV positive patient without an Hep C and Hep C uh, HIV co-infected is 17 years, which is, which is a huge difference. It's uh, almost the same as old times Africa, uh, where the treatment, uh, HIV treatment was not rolled out. So very briefly, Hep B epidemiology, uh, also less than 1% in general, uh, with uh, important factor being migration, 25% burden among migrants, uh, a little bit less than seven cases per 100,000. Similarly, you have uh, national differences. It depends from country to country, uh, but also uh, the reports on the acutes uh, are slightly better than for the chronic ones, uh, and we have differences in the prevalence uh, national-wise, uh, so it depends from the country. You have 1%, you have up to 4%, depending on the country. Uh, chronic and acute are more or less stable, uh, with very similar distribution by age. Again, a uh, slightly younger population, but uh, please take a look that people less than 25 should be by now uh, vaccinated, everybody, everybody in Europe, so there should almost be no uh, acute uh, Hep B cases there. Uh, chronic cases should decrease uh, in this age limit as well. Uh, we will see in the future uh, as the vaccinated population grows older, so hopefully this uh, problem will uh, go down as well. Similarly, acute Hep B uh, is seen in uh, people who uh, inject drugs, but also here heterosexual population is actually of importance. Uh, chronic is diagnosed via nosocomial transmission still, and mother to child transmissions are um, actually visa acutes, but from the mothers who are chronically infected. So where are we in elimination? Where do we stand? Uh, where is the end of the road towards elimination? 
So on one hand, the path to Hep C elimination seems uh, to be not so long, 11 years left to reach the 90% uh, elimination target, but worldwide only 13% have of people with Hep C have been treated so far in 2016, 80% undiagnosed, and many European countries still have some restrictions to DAA use uh, as per 2018. Please first take a look at the blue slide, uh, which is fibrosis stage, minimum fibrosis stage uh, limitation across the countries. So uh, the restrictions are being lifted by now. Poland has entered the stage where there is no fibrosis stage restriction anymore. For example, Germany as well, but F2 was very uh, long the first restriction um, uh, limit of F3 and F4 in majority of countries is the priority, uh, but now these populations are also being treated, so the number of F3 and F4 people is very often decreasing. Uh, also, in some countries there is uh, active drug and alcohol dependence restrictions. Most of them do not have it. Some countries require either psychiatric consultation or uh, proof that at the um, start of uh, DAA treatment the patient is uh, drug negative from serum as a surrogate marker. Um, also there are prescriber restrictions uh, with the easiness of DAA use. Uh, it may be shifted to the non-specialist care, but most of the countries have retained specialist care necessity uh, to prescribe DAAs. Uh, Germany and UK have moved it to no, no restrictions, so some of the GPs, especially trained GPs, are able to uh, prescribe DAAs. Mm, and lastly, uh, there is a discussion whether HIV co-infection should be a priority in Hep C, and you uh, have seen the data on the survival uh, rates. Uh, not many countries agree, and as the treatment is being rolled out, maybe this HIV priority becomes uh, less necessary, but I still think that if you have an HIV person with acute Hep C, the priority is the, for the epidemiological reasons uh, very often rather than for the patient reasons. Many countries uh, expand policies for Hep C treatment. Uh, the key examples are Georgia, which is not even on this slide because uh, it is so famous example and shining star uh, that I didn't include it, uh, but uh, also there are national uh, policies for um, expansion for Romania, Ukraine with national strong programs in uh, Uzbekistan, uh, and the prices are going down. Uh, both original drug prices and generic prices are going down, so the accessibility from the perspective of national program and private patient, uh, also uh, via private input, uh, is, um, is easier, so the, uh, the tools, the price tools are there, the prices will probably go down further, so the goals will be easier uh, to make. Also, many countries uh, discuss these policies of national-wide uh, screenings, universal screening to everybody, uh, and this is from Professor Fleischak data from Poland, that universal screening will increase uh, um, number of new infections and reduce mortality in the future, uh, but the cost has to be uh, calculated for, the, for every country based on prevalence. But again, we have rapid tests, we have accessibility to testing, so this um, HCV mortality uh, may be decreased by the universal screening and linkage to CAR. On the other hand, if you look at this slide, this is a Markov model uh, recently published uh, of uh, most of the countries which can uh, reach the total elimination target. If you could see all the countries in the red uh, will not eliminate Hep C according to this model and you have it reference if you want the, um, uh, the details uh, until 2050. So on one hand we say that uh, the end of road is there 2030 but modeling may prove that uh, this 
uh, elimination target will not be met. It may be met and it will be probably met for Spain, which has universal rollout of uh, DAAs, uh, France, UK, um, I think still uh, Dutch, uh, the Netherlands are on a very good road to uh, have C elimination, uh, but uh, it may prove not to be as easy as it seems, especially in the context of disparities between new infections and net cures. So there have been countries where the number of new infection uh, is actually lower than the number of, uh, 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 of, of people treated. And there are countries where the number of new infections is higher. So it depends on this ratio. So sometimes, uh, you have to think whether you, what, is, what about our population which is getting infected, reinfected, will it affect the elimination uh, target? So all the countries which are below the line may have difficulties uh, with, uh, uh, with, the reaching, with reaching of a target by 2030. Uh, so the net cure rates for the Central Europe are still uh, not very well met. We will see uh, in the near future. I think the uh, next two, three years uh, will show us uh, more progress, uh, how it is. But it may be difficult, especially in the context of uh, new infections. So lastly, acute hep C. So again, the Picasso uh, picture for you. Uh, there will be an update I think it will be published only at the end of this year or early next year. And please watch out for this update because there is a huge likelihood, I, I can't still say that it will be a certainty, that uh, word acute will be removed from the nomenclature so that we will call Hep C recent or chronic uh, for the sake of actually treatment access and that there will be an expectation for immediate treatment of recent hepatitis C, so recently diagnosed. These are the uh, ECDC codes used so far uh, for acute, um, uh, for acute uh, hepatitis C with documented seroconversion, but it will be changed in the future for the sake of elimination, because acute hepsis may actually endanger the um, HCV elimination targets. Why? Uh, we see, and it has been seen over many countries, that there are sexual networks of hep C transmissions, mostly in MSM, uh, in, in, in industrial, in high-income countries, but not necessarily. Uh, we see this in MSM who use chemsex, who shift from chemsex to IDU. We see this also in the IDU populations. Uh, so please be aware that also PrEP in this context will uh, and may increase um, frequency of acute hep C. And this is our own Polish example uh, of 103 people who have been on PrEP from Warsaw, from one of, one of my colleagues. Uh, she runs one of our PrEP clinics and we just review the data. Uh, and at baseline, no patient had uh, HCV. And after six months, uh, there was nine cases of acute hep C's, so 8%. So this is a lot, and it, this hep C will jump into the population and spread rapidly. And obviously, high-risk sexual behaviors are there. Um, drug use, so chemsex use, is strongly associated uh, with uh, acute hep C's, uh, but also please remember that some of chemsex users uh, shift to IDU, uh, so the scale-up in this context will be necessary. And there are examples of the scale-ups uh, from, uh, for example, Netherlands uh, very soon I will show you. Please remember that these sexual clusters of Hep C are also uh, durable over time. So this is one of the models when, uh, this is our cluster from um, from Poland, from variable cities, but there, are, there is also modeling where you have the cluster, the duration of these acute infection networks being uh, from one up to even 14 years. So between one case and the other, which is epidemiologically linked, there have been a lot of years, 
What does it mean? It means that there may be many people who are not diagnosed within the network. It, will, it also means that these people, if treated as priority, uh, we may have the option of a breakage of the transmission networks and actually fighting the epidemics uh, this way. This is again our cluster which has been uh, published this year. Mm, uh, we have NS MSM, we have IDU cluster, and they actually, please remember that if you will have acute hepsis, these people migrate. These people uh, migrate between cities and between countries. They go for the party to Berlin, London, uh, uh, also Madrid, Barcelona, all these very fancy, nice places where you catch hepsi. Uh, okay, the, this is a Dutch example. What happens if you actually treat rapidly uh, acute hepsis? Uh, they uh, provided universal access to everyone, uh, including acute uh, infections in HIV, and they uh, decreased by 50% number of acute infections being diagnosed. This is a huge progress and an important issue. Uh, actually, all the MSMs um, have had uh, priority, or maybe universal access is for everyone uh, in, uh, in Holland, so they have net cure of 76%, which may break this uh, transmission networks, and the size of population was uh, much smaller. So the general trend of a decrease when you treat acute soon or almost immediately uh, is that. So if we want to fight the epidemics, we need to focus on that. So to sum up, uh, there are high numbers of Hub B and Hep C notifications across Europe, uh, mostly chronics with acutes being un underdiagnosed. Uh, Hub B decrease in acute cases. Uh, Hep C has strong north to south geographical trend. Uh, there is a, a slight difference in transmission routes for Hep B and Hep C, uh, and uh, Hep B has an importance in migrants. Uh, most of the hepatitis uh, is diagnosed as asymptomatic infections. Uh, there will be shift in uh, case definition, so watch out for the future. Obviously, always uh, completeness of the data is being discussed and under-reporting. So, in the future, drug price competition, surveillance for transmission networks, which is needed, including molecular surveillance. And here, again, I have seen a wonderful work from Georgia on the transmission networks in Hep C, which will be presented here. Guided intervention based on this epidemiological data, uh, diagnostic rollout, and exchange of the experience uh, this is why this meeting uh, is being set up. So I would like to thank Timo for sharing most of the slides. And uh, if you would be interested also, we have a sequencing uh, facility for Hep C. We could do it basically for everyone who is able to send us a sample uh, or samples. And we, are, and we have set up the molecular surveillance of Hep C for Poland and we are analyzing these transmission clusters. So if you would be interested to collaborate from European level, you are most welcome to write to me. Thank you very much.